Good evening, and welcome to tonight's 20th episode of our Hearthstone Half Hour. I'm Hammy from Fellcraft.org. I hope you're splendid today, having a great day. Do forgive me if I mumble a little bit today. I've been talking to a lot of people this morning, and then talking with a lot of people this afternoon. Lots of running around in the day job meetings and similar. So my voice is there, there or thereabout. So if there's the odd slurping sound, it's me having a cool, tasty, refreshing water as we jump into today, today's episode. So today we're actually going to jump into a rogue arena. Now the reason it says rogue arena, sort of arena times, and it's a little bit of a part two, is because very sadly on Tuesday, which is going to be our arena day, as I just jump into game, um, I have to confess I had a few problems, and that problem was the time old tradition of recording without a microphone on. So I, there was me sitting there and wondering why are all of you people tuning in and then suddenly disappearing? Microphone failure on my part. Probably something to do with plugging it in. What can I say? It was a long day. Um, so, today we are going to jump straight back where we left off. Um, I will just do a quick little review of what we have deck-wise here for the Rogan Rune deck that we tried to draft. Um, in previous episodes we've very much talked about, if you're sort of a new to intermediate player, trying to find a theme, um, and while you're drafting the particular deck that you're trying to play in the arena, grabbing that theme, um, and trying to make sure that as you pick the cards you keep as close to it as possible. I abjectly failed to do that here. Um, my initial thought when I was drafting this deck was really trying to pick up a rogue control style deck, having lots of those good rogue combo cards and control cards that would certainly let me in an arena situation, keep me opponent under control, things like assassinate, um, other things that would allow me to do some damage. What I ended up getting was a, a little bit of a strange mix of some rogue ability control cards, um, some pretty solid minions as well in terms of the, the buffing minions and similar, um, and it looks like a weird mishmash between a standard rogue deck, 50% rogue deck um, for ranked and more ladder type things, and a weird bit of sort of arena drafting mixed in. So it's a little bit unusual this one, I took a defeat to someone where I just couldn't keep their sort of rush aggro deck lots and lots I think it was Murlocs I can't quite remember but I couldn't keep it all under control so let us go for death or glory and see what happens in the rest of this arena run <sighs> cool and refreshing water we've got a warlock so warlock we might be expecting lots of early aggro if they've got all of those nice warlock cards first hand here um, I guess I was kind of hoping for a bit more low minion wise. Um, Warlocks can swarm a little bit. Might be worth keeping that fan of knives there just in case. The Gadgets and Auctioneer is not going to come out till later. Um, I don't really want to have to play the Abusive Sergeant turn one, but just in case I need to do a trade, I'm going to keep the Abusive Sergeant and the Cold Blood. And I get an Elven Archer, so that's not actually such a bad start after all. I'm quite happily. Uh, grab that, given that this is an arena deck rather than a constructed deck. Turn one. What do we have coming up here? Well, there's no issue whatsoever with me dropping my Elven Archer. And let's not forget, because I'm going second, I do have the coin. So that will let me get something out a little bit quicker. While we are waiting for XNXN Gold 99 to make his play, um, brilliant news. Hearthstone is an open beta, and welcome. I very much hope there are some lots of new people enjoying Hearthstone. It was in the US open beta as of the other day. It's, I think today it's just gone into UK open beta. We'll stick a little thing up about that on the site soon. But great news. Um, many, many more people can get in, really give it a test, get stuck into the game, and that will only make it more exciting for all of us people who have been in the game a little bit already. welcoming people who are joining the stream. Great to have you along. So yeah, brilliant that Hearthstone's an open beta. Um, and what that really means is that hopefully a bunch of people get involved. If you know people who are into their card games, get them involved, because that way we can get the game nice and tested, and Blizzard can get stuck in um, with stress testing the game. So really making sure that it's working good and that it's not creaking under the strain of lots of people and then we'll get it to open release as soon as possible. Right, 
what have we been up to? Well, I've been hammering away on the keyboard. Really, we've just got this harvest golem. Um, and actually, when he gets dropped, that death wrestle summons another golem. So, if I kill him, he'll be back to haunt us. I can trade him away uh, for something. Now, the 2-1 that he'll summon, I can take up with him. Oh, I've got an option if I want to sort of trade him off the table in one go. Um, either way, he's going to take out my minions. I can deal one damage to minions and draw a card. Uh, the Dread Corsair, there's not too much point pulling him if I don't have a weapon, so I'll get myself a weapon first. I'm just going to... Ooh. Zap him. Oh dear, <laughs> what a misplay. <laughs> I meant to buff my own minion. <laughs> what can I say, it's been a long day. The less said about that play, the better. Top tip for you guys out there when tired, don't cold blood your opponent's minion. It's not big, it's not funny, and it's not clever. Okie dokie. Fairy Dragon, lovely card to drop. And a little life tap so our Warlock's drawing cards as well. Pretty standard stuff so far. Uh, the Dread Corsair might be a nice little play for me here. Of course, I can't do any direct damage to that chap there, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, actually, I can fan of knives. Now, note that the Fairy Dragons can't be targeted by heroes or spell powers. It means I can't target it directly. But using a fan of knives um, means that it's not. I think technically a spell, and also because of the area effect piece, I can draw a card. So that lets me pick his minion off. A lovely jubbly. However, I have no weapon now. It's a little bit of a pain. I will get down my pint size summoner. So next turn, my minions are a little bit cheaper. Uh, it will be very interesting to jump on the ladder a little bit later or over the next couple of days and we will see what is coming up. Um, whether the influx of new people get straight on the ladder or whether they jump into the arena a bit. Either way, it's got to be good for the game. Um, really, really, really excited about open beta. It will be good to see how the wider meta game fills out and just more people playing. There should be lots more deck types, lots more variety, generally a big bunch of fun. Okay, we've kind of been yammering away. Um, this, I've basically been using my rogue uh, hero and my weapon to sort of pick off minions. It's kind of much of a much of a of a muchness at this point in time. There's not really a huge amount to call. Um, the nice thing about the pint size is that it just allows me to keep pressure on that one less mana for the first minion you play each turn is really really nice. Really gets things going. So you can see the challenge with this road deck that we've drafted. Um, I've got two sprints, <laughs> so late in the game if I'm really fishing for cards I'm good. It doesn't really have a huge amount of control. It's not. It's quite minion heavy really, um, with a lot of minion self buffing and similar. Well, I've got some potentially quite interesting options, that Flame Imp, a typical Warlock card. Um, giving a, a very mana efficient play but then doing damage to the hero in exchange. So there are a couple of op interesting options I've got here. Um, because your old Argent Commander's got charge, I can pick him up, drop him again and trade away, which would be quite good. Uh, the Brewmaster will be pretty cheap, which is also good. And I can also get a Dread Corsair down as well. So there's a nice little combo to be had there. Um, however, I've made an error. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is not a good day. I should have just traded with that minion. So the reason for that, of course, is that uh, I kind of forgot the mana cost. What can I say? It's been a long day. <laughs> this is a very, very good uh, note for any of you new players out there. Take your time. Do not do these silly things. He will take out my pint size next go. So I may as well trade him away while I can. I have no doubt that he'll probably attempt to trade my silver hand knight.
That'll be very, very... Oh no, yep, a nice Shadow Bolt there. Picks my minion off and he's got six damage on the field. And of course I can Argent Commander. Yeah, that's one one to that minion, so it's going to make it hard for me to do anything. And now the pressure comes on with the uh, Knights and similar. The nice thing is I do have a few options here. Uh, ooh. Assassinate is probably the way forward. Let's get that nasty minion off the table. Which is fine. Doing three damage to myself I don't really want to encourage. So I'm going to tap on the table and let him continue. And if I end up losing this game, it will definitely be because of two very silly moves. One, buffing his minion and I'm very much wasting that play earlier in the game. And then the second, picking up my Argent Commander. What I should have done in that situation is just simply traded away. It would have gotten that rather nasty Silverhand Knight off the table one turn earlier. Yeah, you should attack with that. Unless I get some good control cards in my hand very, very soon, I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, well, I can take the tank away. Um, there's an option to sprint here. I could draw the Assassin's Blade and um, take this out and then drop a tank, which means that he will need to trade something away for me. But then it's taking more damage on my hero that I probably do not want to do. Um, Let's draw a card and see what's going on. Oh, Wogan Infiltrator is not going to be huge amounts of use at this point in time. I can taunt, but he will easily trade that away next turn. So for these purposes, I'm going to remove that. And tap on the table. Hello viewers and welcome to all of you guys who have just tuned in. We are witnessing this evening is a very, very torrid rogue arena. The deck was not hugely tight to start with, and a little bit of fatigue on my side is making this a rather painful experience. <laughs> By painful, I mean that this game is probably done next go, so I very much hope it gets a little bit better. This is what we call the end. The end! <laughs> Discarding a random card is not going to work. Uh, bye bye. Good game. Still well played. And my newbie rogue storms on. A horrible defeat that was. And with two defeats, this rogue arena run is not done yet, but it's slowly, slowly clambering like a zombie in The Walking Dead over the barricades towards its inevitable device. For those of you who have just tuned in, this was aimed at being a, a drafted control deck. Um, however, it got a little bit lost midway. The cards didn't quite fall my way in some ways, but I didn't fully commit myself into drafting minions the other way. That is a, as reasonable a starting hand as I can probably hope for given this deck. Here we go, a priest. Now, priests being as painful as they are, let us see what pain I'm going to cause myself now. A coin! And in he comes. Now that loot hoarder, obviously quite a nice little bit of damage. Draw a card as well with the death rattle. So never a bad thing to have at the beginning of the game. Well, I may as well summon a weapon. I will let the priest draw a card. Then I can do a couple of damage with my beast of sergeant. So the weapon summon, very much worth it there.
We will very, very soon see the quality of this guy's draft or not as we go. An ancient remaster drawn. The obvious play for me here is to get my harvest golem out and put some more pressure on. Um, I'll keep that one damage for the time being. We'll see what happens. I could have spent my weapon there and done one damage to him, but maybe saving that one durability is just worth it in case he drops another lobby minion of some kind. we've just seen there is one of those very very evil priest moods a little silence so my golem's not going to be summoning more minions and a divine spirit he's doubled up his priest's health so that's certainly going to get some draw I can't quite take it out not quite um, if I don't damage him then he cannot annoy me quite so much. I'm going to pick it up. That way I can replay it. <laughs> A sneaky little manoeuvre. Um, also again going to keep just that one durability on the weapon. And with that one durability on the weapon... Oh, a death. Okay. Yep. An obvious thing to use. Priests. Takes one to no one. <laughs> I play a priest as my main at the moment. A combo, I can deal 2 damage with my Petition's Blade, so let's see if I can drop something. I cannot drop anything just before the Petition's Blade, sadly, on this turn. Death Rattle will be a nice option. Ooh, battle Cry, I can do 1 damage, I can then do... Ooh, ah, yeah, I can do 1 using my Priest, I can then put a Petition's Blade on and do 1. I then can't do another... No, let's work it out. 1... No, I'm going to have to wait another turn. He's still going to be able to heal. Frustrating. Of course, I would need Wind Fury to t attack twice in one go. And the Priest Heal lets him draw some more cards. A lovely little combo with the North Shire Cleric for all of you new players. Let's get that priest off the deck. The shadow step, of course, I can grab this guy up and charge again with him, and he is cheaper, which is always a nice little move to play. Uh, this uh, this rogue deck in this outing faring a little bit better. We're just gonna have to see how it plays three. Mind vision, random opponent's card. Well, he might get a calm blood hoof. <laughs> My legendary draft that I picked up in this deck. It's fun. Um, two four fives is, is never a bad thing. You can keep the pressure on. Jungle Panther for some stealth. The light protects me. And Argent Dawn Squire. So uh, I've got a little bit of swarming potential there. Two damage to damage minion for free. Thank you very much. Goodbye to you. Away. So in my four drop, um, I would not be able to use to attack the jungle panther with frustratingly. Um, the harvest golem will actually give me options to remove other cards from the table, which would be quite nice. I cannot quite take him out just yet, which is annoying too. Casting a spell, drawing a card. So I've got a couple of options here, but with my seven, I may as well drop him. Get him down and then drop him as well. Now I can't trade anything. I don't want to be pinged by this guy. Um, what I will do is remove that and then I'll get the bubble off this. So if it tries to trade, it's gone. Lovely. So if he does decide to attack with that jungle panther. Ah, yeah. <laughs> he did mind vision my calm blood hoof. <laughs> okay, in that case, it's going to be the battle of the Cairn blood hoofs. Only one shall triumph. To enter the arena. 
only one shall come out. <laughs> Mini blood hoof. A one to Mr. Bloodhoof at this point in time. Uh, we've got a game that's a little bit balanced on the knife edge here. Um, it's really going to depend on what Mr. Bloodhoof does on both sides, I think. And also a cleric wants to draw some more cards. Oh, there goes the Holy Fire. So he benefits from the trade and gets my Bane Bloodhoof. Lovely. Those brothers. Is he going to attack or is he not going to attack? He is trying to decide. Yep, he goes straight for hero blood. As well he might. Hmm, well, we've got some options here. Let's rest summon a minion. I can do one damage to a random enemy. Lovely. Okay, that allows me a direct trade for the... Yes, damage golem. I'm probably going to want to do that. Um, Let's just have a little think. Right, there's nothing else I can play for starters, so resummoning the weapon after I've attacked with it is the best thing to do. I'd kind of like to get rid of Khan and Bane in one go if that's possible. I don't think it quite is. Because they're both 4 5. Uh, it is doable, just. So I can drop him. Then he goes, and he comes up. And then I can, with it does involve me taking yet more damage though, that's the problem. But I can get both of those away. Okay, so I've taken a big risk by taking my health down even further. But I've managed to get rid of his main attacking threats. So unless he starts pulling out mind controls. Strong deck priest, doesn't necessarily change. Just because it's arena. And of course by taking out that uh, Khan Bane Bloodhoof in one turn, I of course let him draw another card by healing his Northshire Cleric. Oh, silence, okay. And he's traded away my remaining Bane Bloodhoof. Oh, that's a lovely little move. I'm looking forward to that muchly. Now I can sprint here. I think the sensible player is dropping my Defender of Argus. Not only does that do one damage and pull him into kill range, um, it also just brain thinking. Let's me train away the remaining cards on his side of the table in that play. The knife juggler is actually coming into its own now, getting that damage down. A 5 5 light spawn. And a defender of Argus, getting his tanking shields up. And naturally, for a priest, getting himself healed too. I really just need to guard, guard, guard as much as I can. I'm going to sprint. I could do with. See what we've got. Oh, lots of cards because of gadgets and auctioneer letting me draw another card as well. Lovely, jovely. So, what can I do? Have I got something I can combo up? Mm, given that I've already, of course, played sprint, I can use cold blood for f four to give myself an extra four attack. Taking the defender of Argus and taking out that light spawn the feels light good spawn. to me. And of course, because I played another spell, I drawed another card. Gadget Sound Auctioneer coming into its own. I'm very much enjoying that. And now, actually, I can start laying the pain down. Um, I don't really want to lose my Gadget, gadget Sound Auctioneer. Drawing another card might be a tad excessive. But I will use my Gadget Sound Auctioneer to take out that final card. And it means that I can, although these guys are low on health, use them to do a good final bit of damage. So that was quite a nice turn actually in the end. Um, the sprint actually, with the additional draw from the Gadgets and Auctioneer, let me go into quite a nice combo where I was managing to take out the nasty enemy threat. 
and at the same time keep some more pressure on. Another light spawn. <laughs> and I'm oh, and swarming with murlocs. He's really not making it easy for me. I need to quite carefully decipher. So a, a, a fan of knives will take out three of his minions in one sweep. And assassinate will take out the remaining one. Whew. And it lets me draw a card. <laughs> oh, I love gadgets and auctioneer now. My new favourite arena buddy. Brilliant. The assassinate will actually let me just drop him away. Um, I've got some options. The assassinate, I feel as I want to keep just in case something nasty comes. Um, however, I think I've got enough to. Uh, I think I've got enough kill on the table to deal with it. I think, he says, hopefully. Drop my Wargan Infiltrator and keep the pressure up. Fermion. Well, it looks as though, from what was a little bit of a desperate situation, um, we've now finally managed to come back, so this priest run is still alive and kicking just about. Ready, sir. Uh, he can charge, he can heal, but I can still do 7 damage unless he's got something in his pocket, which he does not. Which he does not. Sweet, sweet victory. <laughs> oh, a little bit of satisfaction there. That was a little bit down to the wire. That became very good. And rogue to level 10. <laughs> Earning those basic cards. <laughs> 20 out of 20 basics. We got to level 10, which is wonderful. It's all good. So, oh, two wins and two losses. We've managed to bring that back a little bit. So, thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's Half Stone Half Hour. I'm sorry it was a little bit bitty in places. This episode is actually a replaced one that we tried to record on Tuesday. Just gone and had a little bit of a microphone malfunction, uh, to put it politely. <laughs> to put it a little bit more impolitely, I messed up good. Thank you very much for tuning in, um, and welcome to the Open Beta. Any of you guys who are just getting into Hearthstone have just joined the Open Beta and are starting to explore the game. Now, today's episode was about Arena, uh, for those of you who are new to the game, and what I must must emphasise is Arena is something you should have a look at after you've played several of the classes to level 10, got some basic cards, maybe jumped into a few practice games as well, a few unranked friendly games against some uh, other human players. Always good practice and really just got yourself a bit more familiar with the game. Um, there's no reason you can't dive into Arena as soon as you've got 150 gold, but it's generally a bit more fun and a bit easier when you're drafting your own deck if you've got a bit of familiar with most heroes and most decks first. So that was today. Um, today would have been a mailbag episode, but we wanted to do a bit of catch up on Arena and playing a bit more Rogue as we enjoy it. So we are still nailing down our format. Monday will be uh, a, a newbie new player show where we go through new player concepts in a variety of ways. Uh, Tuesday is going to be Arena Tuesday from now on, seeing how that goes too. Wednesday will be laddering. We're going to be really grinding in, showing our sort of zero to hero, looking at different ladder decks. We're priest laddering at the moment, so we're pushing up the ladder with that. Uh, Thursday's a, a little bit to be confirmed. We're probably thinking about mailbag, but it may also be a deck garage or deck tech or possibly a card focus episode two. And then Friday, or well, the fifth episode every week is going to be our day off where we play other games. There might be easy games, console games. Uh, we've got a PVR. We do a bit of console streaming as well. So just something for a bit of fun, discovering some new games together. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, it's been really good over the last week to see a bunch more of you guys tuning into the stream, getting involved on Twitter. Love to hear from you. Love to see you. So as always, um, we're improving, we're learning as we go along, and we need your feedback and your ideas and your suggestions so we can make better content for you. That's the main thing at the end of the day. To come and find our stuff um, for loads of new player videos, all of the archive, going into individual deck building concepts and much more, youtube.com forward slash fellcraftcasts. Subscribe, have a look through, like, dislike, comment, just feedback is brilliant. Constructive criticism is brilliant as well. If you think we can do better, tell us how. That'd be great. Um, Twitter.com forward slash fellcraftcasts. We are tweeting most of the days and always reachable there at some point or another. You can also find out when we're streaming live in the evening, GMT time. 
Uh, if you want to tune in live, Twitch accounts are absolutely free, and that is twitch.com forward slash failcraftcast without the S2 and the archive, the website, and also some things that we can't really talk about in a stream, like new player links, resource databases, glossaries, dictionaries, and lots of sort of resources and static resources, as it were, that you can go and look up and have a little mull over at any time, are all there as well. And that is failcraft.org. Thank you very much for tuning into this, the 20th episode of the Hearthstone Half Hour. And this also marks the week where we've got the most episodes we've ever done in a week. So please keep feeding back so we know.